What's up, barbecue family? It's a big day here at Killer Miller's Q. We're about to be getting into a uh, uncrating. Been about six months in the making. Finally getting my Lone Star Grill in. It's Big Joe. Glad that you guys stopped in to come check me out. That's what's going on today. We're going to be uncrating my new baby. One of the big things I will throw out there is I was looking at a ton of different content, putting together and thinking about should I make the decision on pulling the trigger on my Lone Star Grill, which was... Um, how would I do this? How would I get it out this crate? So I'm going to be recording some of that today for you to kind of check out. One thing I will say to you is I should have had them, they moved it around a little bit on the bottom pallet. And I should have had them remove that pallet before they actually left. Just so I don't have such a ramp when I'm going to be getting this baby down because it is big. But I think we'd be okay at the end of the day. It didn't damage my packaging or anything like that. It's in there pretty secure. So uh, some of the things that I did bring along that I'm going to be using today to kind of get through this thing. The uh, functional utility bar, a hammer, a sawzall, something to clip the old wires with, a razor, and some handy gloves to hopefully get us through. So hold tight. We'll see what we got here. Okay, family, we back. So here's my plan. Once we go ahead and cut through these bands, using the old clippers, we'll saw through with the razor and cut through the plastic. I'm gonna use the actual sawzall and I'm gonna go right along this inside beam and I'm gonna cut straight down all the way to this bottom plank on both sides. And I should be able to pull this straight down pretty easily. Same thing on the back and then get rid of the side and I should pretty much just have it sitting there on the platform. We'll see if it works out that easy and obviously I'll let you know on the back end. Here we go. Cutting to the cord. We'll get the first big looks together. First step is easy.
modify the game plan. I think I can just pull this new part. So I'm going to unpackage some of that stuff in the middle so maybe we can make it a little cleaner on the way out, make it a little bit lighter on this big drop. I'll get rid of a couple of the cables and stoppers that's in the middle, leave my ones in the front and see how it all work out. So far so strong. Okay fam, we are back. We have gotten down all the walls and now we're about to get to the fun part which is getting this baby off the trailer and then starting to work it into the backyard. So a couple things I'll go over. Way easier to break this crate apart than I expected. With that said, it came in here shipped like a tank. It was ready to go so I had no issues with the way that it came. But with that said, I was able to pretty much almost pull down each one of the walls. I'm a respectfully strong person, but I'm not that strong. But um, I think it's more about the angles and everything. Main thing, I never even ended up using my Sawzall, just my hammer. And one of the best things that I had that definitely came in handy was this functional utility bar. And we're about to use that a little bit more. Pretty much allows you to grab any one of these planks real easily, get a good grip on them and be able to kind of work it when you got to pull them out of here and everything along with it's kind of got some of that crowbar and pry bar action on the back end but with that said here's the rest of my plan so pretty much what i was able to do was take down each one of the walls all the way around from there it probably took me longer to take all of the planks and make sure i had all the wood out of the main or all the nails out of the main pieces of wood and i made myself a little bit of a ramp since i'm gonna have a little bit of a drop off and i want to make sure i get out of here somewhat smooth and had to get rid of all the nails there. So with that said, what I think I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna unclip here, which it looks like it's already done. And then this outside one there, which will allow me to kind of move these inside stop bars. I'll leave the middle and I should be able to take that firebox out of there. Bear with me, more butt shots on the way.
This thing right here, true. The way you can grip on these boards makes handling all of this so much easier. Then on the back end, you got your crowbar pry bar. Also, you can pull out nails. For 30 bucks, brand new, I would say definitely use this when you're doing your own crate and it'll make your life easier. That and a hammer, you probably be able to get through this thing pretty easy. So I think what we're going to do from here is we're going to go ahead and release the middle bar. We'll release the, uh, we're going to go ahead and take care of the brakes first. Take care of one brake, release the bar, do the other brake. Let's go for that. See how it works. to be loose. Once we go ahead and cut these middle snaps, we should be able to come on and get it up off of here. As long as we don't hit my little tree stump over here that I'm working on, we should be good. Pray for me, family. set up there. We'll see if that works to kind of catch us on the way down. Like I said, I used that with the wood that came off of the planks getting on the side walls down. My guess, hopefully, we can be able to just kind of fall down nice and easy, and we'll have it on the ground. And the next time you see me, we'll be in the backyard trying to get this thing seasoned up. We in there. Let's go. All right, family, we got it done. I'm gonna run through a couple quick things and kind of give you an idea of uh, how, with the unboxing, we're gonna kind of wrap up this video. I done tore up my whole front yard. Basically, like I told you, one thing I think I didn't remember to tell you is I was a little paranoid, so on top of breaking down all the walls before I actually moved the crate up out of here, or I mean the grill, I also made sure that I pounded in a couple of these screws at the bottom just to make sure that my tires didn't come down and pop it. You know, the last thing you want to do is actually tear something up on your way. So truthfully, I had more issues getting it into my actual backyard than I did with uh, breaking down through the crate. 
a little tight back here, but I uh, was able to get it done. Overall, for those that keep measurements, I want to say that crate and everything was roughly about 48 inches. Um, with the tires on, I got a 24 by 40. Uh, with the off-road package, it was about 44 inches wide to get through. So for me, I had some issues getting through a tight area with my air conditioner and where I got this platform I built for my shed. So I actually had to take some things out of the shed, push the shed forward, and was able to kind of just throw a nice little two by four on both sides, give it a little ramp, and we kind of just went right over here and cut through the yard. So from there, we came through. I used those same two by fours. There's a lot of good wood on that pallet to um, kind of come across my grass just to make sure I didn't necessarily fall into it too much. Really didn't want to use those too much and I end up having to move uh, my landscaping rocks out the way and cut through here. But one way or another, we here. So next video, I'm gonna grab me something quick to eat. Wasn't too, too bad. Like I said, more work more on my side than it was on getting it out the crate and everything. But um, check out that decal, check out that decal. You see it, them boys. We're going to pretty much uh, get something to eat, fuel up real quick, fast. And next thing you know, I'll bring you another video later on. And we'll be uh, spraying this baby down and getting the first seasoning in. And before you know it, I'll be on to my first cook. Appreciate all of y'all for stopping by and kind of going with me on this journey. Um, if you like, like and subscribe. And with that said, keep smoking. All right, family. We here. Round two. I got myself charged back up. Got a little food in me. Got my charcoals going. It's about time to actually get our first looks inside. I haven't even peeked myself, so we're going to do it all together. We're going to get this baby seasoned up quick, fast. I got my Pam out here. This fire box, or this fire management, is huge. I mean, you can easily get a whole split or two in there. Uh, it's crazy. Everything is definitely heavy duty. I want you to check out my decal. Thanks a lot with Chris and Amber working with me on this one. It's something I didn't have put together initially, but uh, quickly kind of got the idea together and played around back and forth and didn't take long, but they nailed it. Uh, definitely overall, just kind of getting a peek at this smoker. Uh, it's great. I wondered if it might be something that was too tall for me um, or too tall overall once I put the wheels on it. But to be honest with you, I'm about 6'1". This comes out about perfect, right about hip height. So it's actually probably more perfect for me than maybe in uh, someone else maybe if you're a little bit shorter but i actually like it but overall i mean this thing is flawless built like a tank it's a smooth one to get in but uh let's get in here and look at some of the other upgrades things that i went with um other than the art other than the actual off-road package which is an absolute must i'm in arizona there's no way i would have got into my backyard and through these rocks without it definitely it's heavy as i open it up for the first time so some of the things that's in here is my fire poker. Bear with me. Kind of back it out a little bit. So I got my fire poker here. Go ahead and just throw it right on the back. It's a good size. Be my rake. I like the way that they got this rake where not only you can use it to rake out your ashes but it's kind of rounded at the end so you can just go to the contour of your actual inside of your smoker if you're cleaning out your uh, belly of it or whatever. Be my shirt. Take care and maintenance. We'll make sure we take some time to go through that. I'm gonna leave my stainless steel cover on for now. Let's get these racks out. Definitely got some good weight to them. So I'm gonna go back here. Let's 
set both of them up against each other and kind of go at them from there or do them both on the ground. Tuning plates. The 40, it comes with the two. I don't know quite what is this. Be a little left of the metal that I happen to get blessed with. All right, I'm gonna throw this on the tripod. We're gonna dig in here, get this thing sprayed out. Let's check out the uh, firebox. There we go. I was wondering about that. I know on my initial cook, I can't use this charcoal management basket. But I wanted to have that for the late night overnight cooks. That's something that I could also throw in, throw in a couple chunks of wood, a whole lot of uh, charcoal, set up that snake S, mess, uh, S um, method and pretty much be able to walk away from it and, and be okay. It's kind of the idea. All right, I'll be right back. We get this. All right team, we back. Finish this thing out, been a long day, slipping in some good yard work. Just finished uh, seasoning it up, or at least more or less adding on the uh, Pam to it. i tell you one thing, I got the 24 by 40. Definitely took a lot more Pam than I thought it would. Slipped my tuning plates in. Not sure if they're in the perfect spot yet, but we'll kind of dial that in. But I uh, was able to kind of get everything in, get everything wet down, top and bottom. Make sure you hit your, your firebox, bottom side of the uh, tray. I went with the thicker firebox. I think it'll help regulate those temps a little bit and hopefully uh, help keep it a little bit. I'm out in Arizona, so the sun beats up everything out here. So more than the heat insulation, I kind of wanted it just to kind of maybe hold on to the pit. Maybe the fire pot don't, or the fire box don't take so much punishment. But I got it all wet up now, finally. Um, I thought it was a good idea to stack a lot of this stuff on top of each other, put the grates at the bottom, so that way so you can use some of that Pam. I probably went through, that would have been about four of those Costco Pams. So that's a lot of good pan. With that said, I know I try to put it on heavy. I'm about to throw in the uh, fire so we can do that together. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and let it get its uh, about four or five hours in, a 225, smooth and easy. And uh, kind of go at it from there. I tell you what, like everyone said, everything is definitely built to last. And that um, ash pan at the bottom is much heavier than I expected it to be. But uh, just to kind of look at the beast. One thing that I'll keep you in mind too that I did that was a mess up. As I was spraying, I didn't notice that uh, my ball valve was already open. So a lot of my Pam kind of went down there. So I'm gonna be doing some cleanup and kind of wiping off some of the areas where some of that got off onto the uh, pit itself. We can at least start off clean. Obviously, I know we're gonna get it dirty here, sure enough. And then my coals are pretty much already burnt out. So we'll probably add some more of those on there before we start throwing on like a split of wood or something like that. But uh, if nothing else, the fire is on. Let's bless it. The first official coals in the Lone Star. And they are red piping hot. And we already got one on the ground. Gotta love it. We're gonna finish this thing up, get it popping. Get it cleaned up. I'll kick back and let you know midway through how it's smoking, how temps hold, and all that good stuff. And then tomorrow you tune in with me. We'll get our first cook in. All right, team. I'm losing daylight. So this will be the last post on the uncrating slash seasoning. I know I left a lot of uh, stuff out since uh, I'm not the best on the editing and all that good stuff. I don't want to burn you out just looking at the random. But I will tell you a couple things. Like I said, make sure your valve, uh, ball valve is closed so you're not dripping out the whole time you're adding in all your Pam. Um, it did take a lot of Pam. Like I said, I got the 24 by 42. Four of those uh, big ones from Costco would have worked well. Temp's holding pretty smooth and easy. I'm trying to bring it up slow so I don't get too high. Roughly, I'm supposed to be somewhere between 200 and 250 during this seasoning process for about three to six hours. So um, I'd rather stay on the low side on that. I got one split in. I'm about halfway open and I mean she's burning smooth tons of room in there on that firebox I didn't have it closed before but uh yeah we in here I'm gonna knock out the rest of this uh, burn in and uh, I'll be back to you tomorrow 
will be lined up. I have some uh, meat to throw on and we'll finish it out. Keep smoking.